Hi there, Michael here. Welcome back to Cinematic Music Production Tips. Today I want to talk about EQ and focus specifically on a very popular filter type, the high pass filter, also known as low cut. There are different opinions on the usefulness and potential problems of using high pass filters. A lot of sources advocate using extensive high pass filtering to clear out low end bloat from most of your instruments, to save that space for a select few important bass elements. This has become a common approach with both recorded and sampled instruments, with the latter being a fair bit more prone to low frequency buildups when lots of sampled instruments are stacked. But there are also many sources claiming that using any EQ, but especially a high pass filter, is extremely destructive and can destroy the phase of your signal. Shifting the phase of a signal sounds like a negative side effect of EQing, but it's actually the main principle of how equalizers work, and it can have both positive and negative side effects. Let's now look at what those might be. I'll use a close mic drum hit for this demonstration. This is FabFilter Pro Q3, my favorite all-purpose EQ and my go-to for nearly all the tasks I would use an equalizer for. Let's start super simple and leave it at its default zero latency or minimum phase mode. I'll set a high pass filter at 100 Hz, but as you can see from the EQ graph with a current slope of 12 dB, it is affecting frequencies even around 200 Hz. At our selected cutoff frequency of 100 Hz, the response is 3 dB lower. Now let's render a new audio file with the filter active. I'm going to zoom in and let's examine the result. Comparing the two files, we can see that the waveform is quite different. Part of this is due to the frequency response changing, but also the filter has caused a bit of a phase shift. This shift is biggest around the cutoff frequency that we set. This means that the lower harmonics around the filter frequency now have phase shifted in relation to the higher harmonics, which are further away from the filter frequency. In other words, part of the frequency spectrum has moved in relation to the rest. In addition to this, there is a bit of ringing caused by the filter, which you can see best if I chop up a small portion of this drum hit and process that again. The ringing lasts a bit longer than the original file. Speaking more in musical terms, what's happened is that your transients now have kind of a soft echo right after them, because a part of them has moved forward in time. However, our ears are quite good at ignoring such small delays and echoes, so it's unlikely that you will hear it. But what do these side effects mean in a real-world mixing situation? First, let me be clear that I'm not saying that you should avoid using high-pass filters. There are plenty of situations in which it's an important tool to use, and if used carefully, it can be great for removing low-end rumble or even subsonic information which could be present in your audio. However, I would suggest that you shouldn't slap it on every single one of your channels by default and consider the following points. Use your ears to judge the effects of a high-pass filter. It might cause an audible difference, which could be a positive or a negative thing, so listen carefully. It's unlikely that you can hear the phase shift by itself, but it could make subtle comb filtering, which was already part of your signal, suddenly much more apparent. Parts of your signal could get louder or quieter as a result of these phase changes. It's also possible that realigning your harmonics could produce a fuller and punchier sound. There are too many variables to know beforehand how your signal will behave, so make sure you continuously assess the results. Using gentler slopes tends to result in a more musical result than a very steep filter where the sudden cutoff can sound unnatural, unless it's done for a creative reason, of course. The biggest phase shift happens around the cutoff frequency. So if you're clearing some low noise or rumble around 50 Hz from an instrument where the lowest fundamental is around 200 Hz, then set the high pass filter as low as possible to avoid affecting the sound of the instrument itself. Consider using alternatives like a low shelf. A low shelving filter will have milder side effects and might be all you really need. I find that shelves also tend to sound more natural. If you need to set the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter so high that the instrument sound is already being affected by the filter, for example, if you have a very low heavy instrument and the alternatives are not working as well as a high pass filter would, then avoid using the same cutoff frequency across multiple channels. Again, let your ears guide you on this one, but consider that you could be introducing a similar phase shift to all of your instruments at the same frequencies, and this could become quite noticeable in the mix. And finally, consider whether you need to remove any low end at all. 
The real issue in your mix might not be the lowest frequencies, but the low mid frequencies instead. Removing too much low end content can remove warmth from your mix. Your goal might have been to create space and clarity, but going too far can remove punch and heft. As you saw earlier, there are other operating modes available for Pro Q3, so let's briefly look at those two. Next, there's Linear Phase. Much like the name suggests, using a linear phase EQ results in no phase shift between the parts of the spectrum. But something else happens instead, a phenomenon called pre-ringing. I'll render the same tiny slice of the drum hit and zoom in to see what's happened. Looking at the waveform, you can see the filter ringing before and after our audio. Pre-ringing can definitely be audible, especially so with low frequency content with strong transients. It sounds like a quick volume swell to your transient and reduces the snappiness and clarity of your transients quite a bit. Linear phase EQ is still a useful tool in other situations and is often used for making very subtle changes during mastering, where the phase shift from a minimum phase EQ will be applied to your entire mix simultaneously and potentially change the interaction of different elements in the mix. Finally, we have the natural phase mode. This is my favorite mode, although it's worth noting that for most simple EQ tasks, zero latency or minimum phase mode is usually sufficient. Natural phase is more closely modeled after analog gear and the quality is fantastic, but it's worth keeping in mind that it does add a bit of extra latency. That's all for this time, thanks for watching.